Hey, good mom, good Monday morning to you. Jim Sinecropi sitting in here for Harold Weber on the Weber This Week show. It's uh, Monday, July 22nd, 2013. And uh, a little cooler this week here in the Finger Lakes. Uh, more seasonable temperatures after last week's heat wave. And a lot going on, including the uh, Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League All-Star Game, which is scheduled to take place Wednesday night at beautiful Colburn Park in Newark. And to talk about that event, I have with me today in studio head coach Mike Armstrong of the Newark Pilots and uh, general manager Brian Connell. Fellas, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Not your first time. Both of you have been up before. I think, Mike, maybe you did a phone interview with the dog at one point. Um, So it's exciting to have the uh, All-Star Game in Newark. Uh, For people that don't know, the Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League, uh, some of the best uh, college baseball players in the country, play in summer leagues like this uh, and um, gives them a chance to hone their skills and, and perform for scouts and especially with this group playing in Colburn Park on Wednesday night um, the best t- some of the best talent there'll be t- scouts uh, from major league clubs there and uh, you know what's it what's it like Brian in terms of requests from uh, as scouts and stuff for, for a game like this uh, well I spoke to pretty much every major league organization there is and uh, you know invited them out to come see some of the guys because there is so much talent in this league uh, so we're really expecting at least 15 to 20 major league scouts to be there to come check the guys out and uh, Mike you're coaching the West team right yeah so how do you what's it like coaching an all-star game like this do you get a practice or anything before the game or <laughs> no there's no practice um, I'm very excited to be you know, chosen to be the head coach of the West team. Um, it's, you know, it's a, an experience for the players. Uh, so the All-Star game is, you know, purely for them, uh, myself, and then all the assistants, which are generally the head coaches from all the other teams. We're there to just facilitate, uh, you know, the best experience the players can possibly have. Uh, all the guys have been selected have had a big year for their respective teams in the league, and you know, they'll all get a chance to showcase their skills, whether it's beforehand in the skills portion or uh, the home run derby or in the game. And, you know, we'll be throwing many different pitchers. Um, mm-hmm. ev- all the position players will get a chance to have a couple of bats and play in the field and, and give them give the scouts a chance to see them showcase their talent. So for us, we're just uh, we're there to help the players have the best experience as possible. And uh, the home run derby starts at about 6 o'clock. Yep. And uh, the game, first pitch a little after 7. It's scheduled for 7, but it depends on how long the home run derby runs. Sure, but. right. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously open to the public. Where are tickets, Brian? Uh, $4. Four. Yep, gates will open at 5 o'clock, so they can get there. We'll have a, a band playing, um, face painting. Uh, people from the Apple Shed will be there doing uh, arts and crafts. Uh, there'll be a lot going on, you know, a lot of giveaways that night as well. And we've talked about it before, um, what a great family experience it is at Colburn um, for any game, for any regular season game to get up there. uh, You know, it's a great thing to do on a summer night is to watch some great baseball. But uh, Wednesday night, of course, it's going to be at a whole nother level as the best players in the league are are there, Um, you know, from places like Glens Falls, Amsterdam, Cooperstown, Albany. And, of course, uh, Newark. And we'll talk about some of the Newark players on the roster. But uh, how guys do they uh, pick the team? How do they pick it? I know in the major leagues we vote. You know, there's fan voting. How does it work for the Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League? Yeah, essentially for the, the Perfect Game League, we have a conference call with all of the coaching coaching staffs of your division. So the East had their own conference call, and then following that, the West had a conference call. <clears throat> all the head coaches get on the phone uh, with Jeff Cunyon, who's the commissioner, and we all uh, basically we lobby for the players that we want from our team on the roster and then all the coaches collectively agree or disagree or speak their mind on who they think and uh, you know a couple guys from our team actually were suggested by other coaches so um, you know it's really just kind of a team effort everybody wants to see the best players there Mm -hmm. Uh, obviously you're, you're a little bit biased for your own guys but uh, all the coaches, you know, they don't want to see somebody there who may be overmatched, but they also don't want to see anybody who's deserving left off the list. So it's kind of a group effort. Let's take a look at some of your guys who are on this team. Uh, let's start with the position players. Uh, Steve Lorino out of Marist College. Uh, tell us a little bit about Steve. 
Yeah, Steve's a, Steve's a great kid. He's uh, from downstate in New York. He's a New York guy. He went to Marist and had a really, really big year for them this past spring. Uh, started almost every day in the outfield for them and uh, hit in the high 300s, almost 400 for the season. And he's come on and done a great job for us. He's been primarily a, a designated hitter for us just because we have a lot of depth in the outfield. But he's consistently hit. Uh, basically 300 or a little higher he's had a lot of rbis for our team and he hits right in the middle of the order so you know he's a big bat that uh, the league definitely knows about and i'm excited that he'll get a chance to showcase his talents on wednesday and a couple other position players you got max rossing out of Cortland state another local downstate new york guy um tell us a little bit about max yeah max max is uh he's a pleasure to have on the team he, he's definitely got the right head on his shoulders for baseball um Nothing really gets to him too bad, which you have to have a short memory to be to be a talented baseball player. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, he hit over 400 for Cortland uh, this past spring, and Cortland is obviously a powerhouse uh, in this region. And, you know, he's team captain for Cortland, and he's used those leadership skills here in Newark to help us, you know, rally and, and have a great team nucleus. So, you know, he's, he's had an awesome year. He's been our three-hitter essentially the whole year and played a, played a good first base for us. And uh, Dave Vandercook out of Columbia. Is that Columbia? Ivy League Columbia? Yes, it is. So uh, so he's probably, you know, obviously the smartest guy in the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i got a couple guys from Penn, too, that might argue. But, uh, yeah, right. Uh, yeah, Dave, you know, another really, really talented player. He's from Florida uh, originally, but goes to Columbia, so, you know, has the New York ties, which is nice as well. And uh, he's a left-handed hitter throws right-handed plays third base he's got a really really good glove um and you know the his big attribute has been his slugging percentage for us Uh, his average is a little bit lower than i think he would want it to be but he's hit a lot of doubles a bunch of triples and a couple home runs for us this year and he's another middle of the lineup kind of guy who's got some serious potential for the next level uh with with more improvement and uh, on the other side of the ball, we got four pitchers from Newark. Uh, Justin D'Amato, St. John Fisher guy. Uh, tell us a little bit about Justin. Yeah, Justin was a staple on the team in Newark for the first year that won the championship. Mm. Um, I believe he was an all-star that year as well. So, yeah. you know, he's no stranger to the Perfect Game League or the all-star game. Uh, we brought him in late. He was had a little stint in the Northwoods League out in Minnesota and Wisconsin. So... After he finished up with that, uh, he came back home, and it was a no-brainer for us to sign him. We've, we've been happy to have him. Uh, he's, he's done a good job starting for us. He came in relief the last time out. and You know, he's he's definitely an important part of the team, especially being a local guy. And another pitcher from Young Harris College, Donald Frew. <clears throat> yeah, Donald has done a really good job. He's our closing pitcher. Um, he had, I believe, six or seven saves in a row to start the year. Uh, basically just dominant nobody could touch him uh, he's you know he'll run the ball up there in the low 90s with a nice curveball and you know, he's a he's a fun to watch he's a fiery kind of guy he's a competitor and he should you know give us a little bit of entertainment at the all-star game and hopefully also blow some guys away you think he might have a chance to close out like will he be your closer if you're in that type of situation close game we'll see definitely there's a couple guys from uh some other teams there's a kind of a sidearm pitcher uh from utica who's pretty good but i I would say he's probably the guy at the end of the game if we need him and uh andrew sanders ithaca college yes andrew is local guy. He's from auburn went to high school in auburn and then stayed close by going to Ithaca College with his buddy Tim LaCastro, who got drafted with this the past Blue Jays spring. now. Yep, having a good year with them. And he was on the Pilots roster, but <coughs> never got to play a game because they they pulled him up. And uh, yeah, <laughs> and he's, he's playing pretty well actually. As of late, he's been hitting the ball better. He um, has. Um, you know, it, it was a bummer to lose him for us, no doubt. But I'm proud of him, and th- you know, through my years of coaching at Ithaca, uh, I've seen him develop from freshman year all the way to where he is now, and. I was really happy for him, but Andrew uh, has done a great job. I mean, statistically, he's been our best pitcher by far. Yep. Uh, he's, you know, nothing super um, overpowering about him. He, he throws in the mid to high 80s, but he throw his ball has a lot of sink on it. Throws a heavy ball, 
and he just pounds the zone with strikes and and uh, the team makes plays behind him. He's he's just a very good pitcher. And then finally we got Will Spitzfaden yep. out of Southeast Missouri State. Yeah, Will, um, you know, looking at his stat line, uh, people probably may wonder why he's in the All-Star game. But Will is our number one pitcher. He's a lefty. Uh, again, he's not. he doesn't really blow people away. He throws mid-80s. But he's... You know, he's has the most innings pitched in the league by anybody by far. Uh, he's he's very good starter. He's had a couple rough outings, but you know, on the whole, I believe four of his starts, he's only given up one or two runs, and and uh, you know, unfortunately, some of the games he pitched his best, we didn't give him the runs to support it. Right. Um, but you know, he's been a staple for us at the front of the rotation, and he definitely has a shot to get some looks at the next level with this the type of stuff that he has. That's going to lead me kind of to the next question. Once again, the game is a Wednesday night home run derby at 6. First pitch uh, shortly after 7. The game's going to be, and the home run derby will be webcast, available on FingerLakes1.com and FingerLakes1.tv um, with uh, WACK Radio on the call, I believe, for that one as well. Um, we've been covering a lot of the home games this year, and uh, this one will be no different. But, of course, so about $4 for a ticket if you want to show up and uh, and see all these great young baseball players uh, compete against each other on Wednesday night. The weather forecast is pretty good. Looks like low 80s. <laughs> and, on wood, yeah. yeah, it's been a <laughs> tough year for to run a baseball team here in the Finger Lakes with, you know, obviously all the weather. Now, has that forced you guys to cancel games outright, or are you going to make up the whole schedule by the time it's over? As long as nothing else is can or postponed or anything, we should be good. Uh, you know, we were able to – the way they do is they base it off uh, the next time you play that team. So we actually had it in our schedule. Some of the rainouts ended up being coming up the next fo- week or two. So right. we were able to make almost all of them up. We got two left uh, Thursday and then next Monday. So. And right now you guys are about seven and a half back of first, but only a game <laughs> or a game and a half out of the – Final uh, playoff only spot. A, only a half game out. Half game out of the final playoff spot, yep. about seven to ten games to go. Uh, nine, yep. yep and nine then, games left. And an, an expanded perfect game collegiate baseball league playoffs this year. Yeah, because there's ten teams this year. There's two divisions again. Last year we didn't have the separate divisions. Um, and the way they're doing it is top three technically make the playoffs. There's one play-in game between the two seed and the three seed. Then they play a three-game series against the number one seed, who then go on to the championship series. And um, also something different I noticed this year, you're playing a lot of uh, crossover games, um, out of the league games, whether it's the Syracuse Salt Cats or uh, some of these other squads, or even uh, some college all-star teams maybe. Yeah, we uh, we played the Syracuse Salt Cats team twice this year. Um, they're out of the NYCBL. Uh, we were scheduled to play a Rochester Collegiate League, but that, that one didn't end up being played. But, um, yeah, you know, we're just trying to play different people and – they want to play some better competition. It's a little better than their league they're usually in. Um, so it's good. You know, it's win-win for both of us. Mm-hmm. Well, looking at this roster, uh, Brian and Mike, uh, who are probably the, you know, not wanting you to focus on one person, not the rest of the team, but who are some of the maybe top prospects? If you go to this game Wednesday night, who do you think is the best chance you might see them playing in a Major League Baseball uniform, you know, someday? From the pilots or just in general? Just in general, off of either of these rosters of guys from all around the league. Well, we have a guy who is in the home run derby, uh, Jacob Russell. He's from University of Kentucky, and he certainly has to uh, make some adjustments in order to reach that, but he has the raw ability that you would look for, for sure, uh, to become a major league player. He's He's got the size, he's got the strength, he drives balls out of the ballpark, he hits for power, and he can run and throw. He's got a crazy arm, man. Yeah. yeah. Good arm. And, uh, you know, from our team, uh, he's won you know, possibly Max Rosing as well. Uh, I'm, you know, again, he would need to make some, all, everybody, yeah. you know, even the, from the other teams, they, there's nobody that is ready to go right away. Um, but, you know, Joe Maroney from Watertown, He's an outfielder. He's very, very talented. He can run like the wind. He's got a good arm. He hits a ton, and he makes things happen. He's a Jayhawk, right? Kansas out of Kansas. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And he's very good. Um, you know, Elmira. They have a catcher uh, that is. He's a great catch and throw guy. His batting average isn't awesome. He's from Siena College, uh, but he's a very good defensive catcher. Uh, that that could be a guy that you might see playing in, at least in the minor leagues with a shot to go on. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, it's tough to say beyond that. Utica has a couple guys that are, have some really good statistics. Uh, but again, we've only played them, I think, three times so far. So, And they came pretty early on in the year. Uh, so, you know, to kind of answer your question, I'm that's one of the reasons I'm very excited for the game as well is to get another look at all these guys and to see, you know, maybe somebody came on huge after we played them early on in the year. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe these guys will be uh, someone that we'll get to see later on. In the past, uh, in, this is the third year, right, the Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League yep. being in place up here in our area. And um, over two dozen players have been drafted, you know. So, and of course, you get drafted. That means you're in the system, you know. So whether it's Triple A, Single A, Double A, or, or eventually the big leagues, but uh, geez, it was just last spring. Um, the Yankees had a guy that was a former uh, Perfect Game Collegiate Baseball League player who who saw game time action against the Red Sox in Fenway. Yep. So yeah, there's. I mean, there's a lot. If you go back to before our league actually started, the NYCBL. Uh, guys like Hunter Pence, you know, he played in the NYCBL up here in New York. There's, there's definitely some names that come out of these leagues that there's some real talent. And of course, that's just a bonus for going and telling you, you, you go there, you get a nice uh, food from the concession stand, uh, you know, nice comfortable seating, um, and watch a great baseball game as the sun goes down. It's, it's, you know, take it from someone who's been there uh, multiple times. There's, there's nothing like it. It's, uh, it's fantastic. And sometimes you'll be sitting there at the game in Newark, and you'll kind of forget you're in Newark. You, <laughs> you might think you're up at, uh, in Syracuse or Rochester, but just you know, small town Newark, uh, bringing these types of players here. And, and um, of course, owner Bob and Leslie Omen always making improvements. This year it was a new locker room. How's that working out for you guys, Mike? It's excellent. I mean, it's double the size. Uh, there's plenty. Now more than enough room for the guys to to be comfortable. Uh, you know, it's air conditioned, and we have the televisions in there with cable, and you know, there's a foosball table. The the guys pretty much have it as good as as good as they right. can get. And that's you kind of have to recruit these guys because they choose. I mean, you make relationships, I suppose, with other coaches around the country, but um, these players have to choose where they want to play in the summer. So it's, so a, a nice amenity like a new locker room with a foosball table or a TV, you know, these are college kids. That's, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That can make the difference. It can go a long way. And, of course, the other thing that, that makes a difference is I know that Bob and Leslie always really take care of these guys in terms of uh, good food and, uh, and uh, you know, nice travel. And, and, and the locker room just another example of that. So, um, again, it's Wednesday night. Home Run Derby at 6 o'clock, first pitch shortly after 7 o'clock, and uh, if you can't make it out to the game, it's only $4 at the uh, gate to uh, to watch this great event. Um, but if you can't make it, check us out on FingerLakes1.com. Check out the front page for links to the live webcast. Um, hang tight, guys. I'm going to uh, take a short break here, and we'll come back and uh, talk a couple other sports talk topics before we get out of here. And welcome back up here inside the FingerLakes1.com studios. Jim Sinekropi sitting in for Harold the Web Dog Weber, and I'm joined, of course, by uh, head coach Mike Armstrong of the Newark Pilots and general manager Brian Connell of the Newark Pilots. Perfect game, Collegiate Baseball League All-Star game coming up this Wednesday night, the 24th, uh, 6 o'clock start for the Home Run Derby, 7 o'clock start for the ball game, $4 tickets at the gate. You can learn more at NewarkPilots.com or PC or pgcbl.com, Perfect Game, Collegiate Baseball League.com. And, of course, uh, we're going to be webcasting the game on FingerLakes1.com, so you can uh, check our homepage for links tomorrow night. We'll have the Home Run Derby, too, as well. So if you want to watch the Home Run Derby, tune in at 7, and, of course, or at 6, and the game, of course, 
at uh, shortly after seven. Um, now you guys, it's it's a really busy couple of months during in season where you guys are on the road um, almost constantly. When you're either there's games every night, and then when there's rainouts or doubleheaders, it's just baseball, baseball. Do you get much time to watch um, any major league baseball games or any other sports, or is it some West Coast games? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> that's that's about it. But so, what do you think about uh, Jeter and Arod for the Yankees? Are either one of those guys going to play again? You know, in a Yankee uniform. I think uh, that Jeter will be back for sure. Um, you know, being the captain, and I did see the the end of last night's game because we played at five o'clock. So I was able to catch kind of the second half of that, and you know, seeing him in the dugout with the guys. Yep. Uh, you know, that was really encouraging, um, and also. You know, I just think his attitude and his preparation and the way he takes care of himself, it, it, they're all too good uh, to, to force him out of the game. Uh, even if, you know, he misses the rest of this season and then he finally gets himself right and only plays half of next year, I, I don't know what it will be, but I think he will definitely be back. Certainly wouldn't like to think he's going to go out, you know, like this. Just, nah. uh, you know, that last game, uh, he did see some one action in one game this year and got hurt again. So yeah. You don't want to see him go out like that. A-Rod, though, I don't think uh, the sentimental folks really care. I, I, don't, <laughs> think they, I don't think they have the same attachment there as they do right. with the Captain Jude or not. Yeah, and A-Rod, you know, he had this his outbursts on Twitter or whatever they were. And, you know, I think if he comes back, it may not be as a Yankee. Yeah, I could see something. But, you know, who would want to take a chance on a guy like that? Uh, the Marlins? Yeah, the Astros. Yeah. <laughs> It's I'm sure there's teams out there. And the Rangers yeah. signed Manny Ramirez. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So yeah. you never know. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, A-Rod, you know, he, he's been there. They've won a lot while he's been there. But Jeter is a is a true Yankee, and I don't think that will ever be taken away from him. So Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I'm sur- I could almost guarantee you won't see Jeter signing with the Marlins or someone no. else. But uh, no. oh. He'll go out of Yankee, definitely. So and then also yesterday, I don't know if you guys are golf fans though. You get to play any golf? Uh, I do. <laughs> when I go on the road, I t- tend to get the clubs out every once in a while. Oh, there you so. go. <laughs> yeah, there's a nice course in Cooperstown. You guys are heading up there for a game tonight. Yeah. Um, to yeah. British Open. Phil Mickelson wins the British Open, and you know he's 45, I think, 45 years old, mm-hmm. and the first time he's ever won it. He's now won three of the uh, four majors: the Masters a couple times, and the PGA Championship, and now the British Open. So just the U.S. Open left for the career Grand Slam. Um, and I uh, a lot of mixed feelings on a guy like Mickelson. I feel great for him, uh, happy for him, happy for his family uh, to see a guy. And that's kind of how it's been at the British Open. These guys in their 40s have won the past three years, going back to Darren Clark two years ago. And uh, that's one of the great things about golf. You know, talking about Jeter and A-Rod, they're both, you know, in their lower 40s and they're breaking down yeah and here you got a guy like phil mickelson who's five years away from 50 you know winning one of the biggest tournaments and it just goes to show you the type of game it is i think of course youth and being able to turn on that ball and crank it out there is a big asset but in golf just the experience um can help you around a course like Mirfield, like mickelson did this weekend and uh and uh the other thing they took away from that British Open was Tiger Woods. You know, another Sunday collapse. It just seems like to me like it's perhaps mental with him to the point where he, uh, if he was winning going into the final round, he might do well, but he's not too good at coming from behind. Even when he was dominant, he would just beat people, get a lead, and never look back. He yeah. never really had to catch somebody on the final day. So all this ahead of course of the PGA Championship in Rochester in a couple of weeks so it's fun to think of Mickelson playing well coming there <laughs> Tiger's playing well um, well enough you know obviously to be in the second to last group so should be a good uh, tournament at the PGA um, and, and that'll be about playoff time for you guys right a couple of weeks hopefully hopefully yeah you can pick up that game and a half and uh, sneak into the playoffs and it's a one game playoff for the Third and four seeds. Uh, second and third, second. and then then it's a three game series against the first seed. So, which will most likely be Watertown unless something absolutely crazy happens. Yeah, they have a decent lead on Elmira, and um, yeah, you know, hopefully we're in the thick of the playoffs while the PGAs are going on. 
Yeah, and it was uh, you know in the playoffs the last two years, league champs two years ago. Last year in the um, was it the finals or semis? So you guys dropped out. Uh, semis yeah. to uh, Amsterdam. Was uh, it, last what? year was Glens Falls. Falls. Oh, yeah. Glens, Glens Falls, Falls. That's right. Yeah. The, two close games, but yeah. and then hoping this year to uh, to sneak in there and uh, and make another run at it. Yep. So, but uh, again, Wednesday night, perfect game, collegiate baseball league all star game at Colburn Park, seven o'clock. For the game, six o'clock for the All Star game. You can go, or for the Home Run Derby, you can go. You can eat some dinner. You can relax. You can bring the kids. Um, lots of stuff for kids to do. You mentioned face painting. Their bounce house there too, as well. And yep. and uh, beautiful scoreboard, beautiful field, beautiful facilities. Um, highly recommend any fan of baseball or anybody uh, with little leaguers, you know, or, or young kids playing baseball. They're going to have such a great time. And it's one of the great things that I remember from uh, going up there a lot last year was um, you know letting the kids on the field after the game to get the all to get the autographs and stuff. You think that'll be the case for this All Star game? Oh, you definitely. think the kids will have access to the players? Definitely, hundred percent. So you know, bring your ball, um, or bring your programs and, and your pen, and, and get ready to get some autographs. Uh, you never know which one of these guys is going to uh, be a future Hall of Famer. Um, I, my dad always tells me the story of going to um, watch the Geneva. I, I, they might have been the Geneva Redlegs back then, but uh, Pete Rose, you know, played baseball in Geneva. Yep. And yep. my dad, as a youngster, would go and you know and, and saw Pete Rose play you know, in Geneva. <laughs> so you never know. I wish he got his autograph and, and, <laughs> and handed it down to me, but I'm not so fortunate. So any parting shots, guys, before we get out of here? Uh, no, just uh, thank you for having us on, and definitely, yeah, Wednesday night, uh, gates will open at 5 o'clock, there'll be lots going on, giveaways, uh, all game, music, you know, lots of stuff for the kids, so hopefully the weather stays nice, and it'll be a great night. So, Mike, if it comes down to the one-game playoff, or one game maybe to get into the playoffs here as we enter the stretch run, uh, who, who are you putting on the mound? Who's starting that game? Sanders or Spitzfaden? Probably Sanders. Yeah, if it comes down to it, and he's fresh. Probably Andrew. Well, great luck uh, the rest of the way, guys. And thanks again for coming in and uh, sitting with me. And, uh, again, hope everybody can get out to Colburn Park in Newark on uh, Wednesday night where some of the best college baseball players in the country will be taking part in the All-Star game. And, again, this is Jim Sinecrope sitting in for Harold Weber. I hope you have a great week, everybody. And uh, we'll see you back here next Monday morning. <laughs>